Hello and welcome to another yoga class. Today we'll be doing a Mark Stevens sequence, sequence number eight, which has a focus on hip opening today. Let's go ahead and get started in Sukhasana Easy Pose. So having a seat, if you want to be up on a blanket, I like to be up on the blanket. And then go ahead and get seated, cross-legged. And then we'll rest the palms on the knees, sitting up nice and tall, and close the eyes. Taking our first few moments to get settled in, really tuning inward, being present in this moment. So taking this opportunity to make a clear delineation, whatever we're doing before our yoga class, and then now we stop, no more rushing around, a moment to exhale. And then we'll take a moment to set an intention for your practice today. So with so many benefits to yoga, just picking one of them whether that's looking for more flexibility or more strength, maybe inner peace, whatever that is for you, hold on to that thought for a moment. Here, take a few slow, deep breaths through the nose. And at the top of every inhale, see if you can take just an extra sip of air, feeling a gentle stretch through the lungs. And at the bottom of each exhale, squeezing out that last cup of air, making room for fresh new air to enter. Slowly blink the eyes open. We'll come on to hands and knees. And prepare for me to loss on a cat dog tilts. Once you arrive into hands and knees, allowing your hands to be just slightly wider than shoulders width apart. And from here, we'll synchronize the breathing with the movement. So as we inhale, we drop the belly, arch the back, lifting the chin. And then smoothly transitioning through neutral as we exhale, scoop the belly in, tucking the tail and the chin. Again, inhale, drop the belly, arch the back. And exhale, scooping the belly in, press the space between the shoulder blades high to the sky, drop the chin. Again, inhale, arch the back. Exhale, curving and rounding. Inhale, through neutral, arch the back. Exhale, curving and rounding. Just one more. Inhale, arching. Exhale, curving and rounding. Inhale, back to neutral. From here, extend your right leg behind you. Oh, I don't have enough room. Let's try that again. Extend your right leg out behind you. And at the same time, bring your left arm in handshake position. So thumb pointing up and lengthen through the spine. So we're not trying to arch the back or rather pull the belly in. And we're not going for height here so much. 
try to rather keep the shoulder square. There's a tendency to let the shoulder dip forward. Keep that shoulder back and even with the other shoulder. So not dipping low, not going too high. And then once you're all even and square, then lift the arm, not the shoulder. Squeezing the glutes. So using the back body strength, shoulders are square, lengthening through the spine and the neck. And put it all down, back to hands and knees. Other side, same care and attention on that second side. Extend the left leg behind you, not going for super height, but rather length. Scooping the belly in so we're not dipping through the back. Supporting the spine. Then right arm in handshake position. Once again, lengthening, keep the shoulders square. Shoulders are away from the ears. And then once everything is square, lengthening and even maybe lifting the right arm as those left toes are pointing and trying to touch the back wall. Reaching, lengthening, using the glutes, using the whole back body strong. Putting it all down. One more round, right leg extends out and lifting, but more so lengthening. Hips are even so we're not dipping or torquing at all. And then left arm and handshake position, going for length. Shoulders are even. When we have our shoulders kind of in space, there's like 360 degrees of uh, opportunity for things to go wrong. So we would rather think about making things even. And then once everything is all even and squared up, then at that point, reaching the arm upward just a little using the glutes belly scooping in to support the low back and put it all down last time last side left leg extends reaching hips are even and square right arm and handshake position same thing shoulders are even lengthening through the back supporting the belly then maybe lifting up the right arm as the left glute especially is working. And release. From here we'll press up and back to downward facing dog. So toes tuck under. I like to take just a moment in this position here. I don't know what you call this. This is just tucking the toes under. I feel a nice stretch through the Achilles tendons here. Before I head up and back, it's nice. Here we go. Adam will push one us on a downward facing dog, maybe even walking it out a little bit. Maybe shifting hips from side to side. From here, belly scoops in, gently lower your knees down through hands and knees and head all the way back to the last on a child's pose. Choosing your arm position, either keep them forward or along your sides, palms facing up. Let's take a moment to soften and relax. And remember this pose is available at any time for you. And before we fully fall asleep, let's head up and back to downward dog once more. So toes tuck under, maybe doing that little stretch and heading up and back. While you're in down dog, take a peek at your feet. Just double check that they're parallel. Sometimes the heels like to tip in towards each other. Allow them to separate. And then send the feet forward all the way to the top of your mat, landing in a forward fold of the feet parallel, lengthening the spine and soften the neck. So completely relax the neck here. And 
And then slowly ragdoll one vertebra at a time. Take your time, take your time, take your time, take your time. All the way up to standing. And then come on up to the top of your mat in Samastitihi, which means equal standing. And for this, we'll be in Tadasana Mountain Pose. Wide across the collarbones, fingers together and reaching down towards the floor, palms facing in towards you, but don't let that make you internally rotate. You want to keep externally rotating through the shoulders and lengthening the fingertips down to the ground. We'll head into a few classical sun salutations just to get warmed up and loosen up a bit. Here we go. Inhale, arms go up. On the exhale, gliding forward, nice and smooth, all the way down. Inhale, looking up to the horizon for flat back. Exhale, down, right foot steps. Way back, lowering the knee, untucking the toes. Arms sweep. Just a moment here as the hips sink and melt downward. Drawing that left hip back a little to keep the hips relatively even as we sink and melt. Not here too long though. We'll float the hands down in preparation for plank. So tuck those back toes under, front foot steps back to a strong plank. Preparing for Ashtanga Pranam, eight limb salutation, that inchworm one where we go knees, chest, chin, keep the hips high to the sky as you arch the back. Scoop through to the belly, point the toes, peel the chest off the floor for a little baby cobra, and release. Hips press up and back. Do a downward facing dog, we're not here long. Right foot steps forward, back knee gently lowers, untucking those toes. Arms sweep up for Anjaniasana, low lunge pose. Not here too long, hands float down. This time back foot steps all the way forward into flat back, long through the neck. And exhale down. Inhale all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. And exhale to a tall mountain. Other side. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, gliding forward. Inhale for flat back. Exhale, down, left foot steps back. Knee lowers, untacking those toes, arms sweep. And heading down through lunge. Front foot steps back to a plank. Hips remain high. Knees, chest, chin. Arching the back. Scoop through to the belly. Peel the chest off the floor. Point the toes. Release. Pressing up and back. To downward facing dog. Not for long though. Left foot steps forward. Back knee lowers down. Untucking those toes. Arms sweep. Heading down through lunge, back foot steps forward, all the way into flat back, and release. Inhale. Use those glutes to help you ascend all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. And release to a tall mount, flowing right into the next one. Arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for flat back. Exhale, down right foot steps back. See if we can smooth this out all the way up to Anjaniyasana as we sink the hips low. Float the hands down through lunge, stepping it back to plank. Hips stay high, knees, chest, chin, arching the back. Scooping through, point the toes, peel the chest off the floor, release, belly scoops in to press up and back to your downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward, back knee lowers, nice and smooth all the way up as the hips sink low. Float the hands down through lunge, back foot steps forward, all the way into flat back. 
exhale down. Inhale all the way up, reaching up high. And release back to Tadasana Mountain Pose. Other side, arms go up. Forward fold like you're gliding through water. Inhale for flat back. Exhale down, left foot steps back. And sweep the arms up as the hips sink low. Float the hands down, step it back to plank. Lowering knees, chest, chin, hips stay high. Scooping through. Point the toes, peel the chest, shoulders down. And release, pressing up and back. Downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward, back, they lower, sweep the arms as the hips go low. Down through lunge, back foot steps forward, all the way into flat back. And release. Inhale all the way up, reaching up high. And release to a tall mountain. Just one more. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, down, same exhale, right foot steps back and lowers. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, flat the hands. Inhale to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, little cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, right foot steps forward. Same inhale, back knee lower. Same inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, back foot steps forward all the way into flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. Exhale to a tall mountain, other side, flowing right into it, arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale down, left foot back, same exhale. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, float the hands down. Inhale to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, scooping through, peel the chest, point the toes. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Inhale slowly all the way into Anjaniyasana. Exhale, flat the hands. Inhale, back foot steps forward into flat back. Exhale down. Inhale all the way up, reaching up high. Exhale, Tadasana Mountain Pose. From here, take a moment, bring the palms together at heart center, close the eyes. Just feel all that warmth that you've created, getting a little bit warmer, that energy you've created. And I'd like you to imagine someone or something that you feel is very strong. Taking a moment, just feeling the strength of that person or thing. Maybe it's someone you know who's super strong. Maybe it's concrete or some sort of stainless steel something. Whatever it is, feel that strength. Returning to Tadasana Mountain Pose, we'll head into a few Sun Salutation B, a very strong Sun Salutation. So feeling that strength that we've just cultivated, and here we go. Wide open across the collarbones, 
Bend the knees deeply, sweep the arms. Ushkatasana, powerful pose. Drawing the arms back, back, back. On the exhale, gliding forward, straightening through the legs as much as they'll let you. Inhale, look up to the horizon for flat back. Exhale, down, plant the hands, send the feet back. Strong plank, scoop the belly in. Knees can remain high for an extra challenge or gently lower your knees down. Either variation, we lower to a low push-up position for chaturanga. And release. Inhale for cobra or upward facing dog if that's in your practice. Wide open across the shoulders. And exhale, downward facing dog. Preparing for Virabhadrasana 1, warrior 1. Right foot steps forward, back heel spins down. This is just like Anjani Asana in the same way that it's a few different movements, but it's really one movement. So linking it all together like it's one movement. And then we just got there, but we're heading down through lunge, stepping it back through plank, remembering your options for legs as you lower, chaturanga. Inhale for cobra or up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Other side, left foot steps forward, back heel spins down, float the arms up for warrior one on the second side. We're not here long though. We float the hands down through lunge. Stepping up back to your plank and lowering chaturanga. Inhale for cobra or up dog. And exhale for downward dog or child's pose. We get a little break here. Breathing deep. That's two. Three, four, and five. Send the feet forward all the way to the top, inhaling for flat back. And exhale, forward fold. Heels and toes together, bend the knees deeply, sweep the arms for Utkatasana, powerful pose. And standing tall. Tadasana Mountain Pose, again flowing right into it with the same strength and integrity as the first one. Powerful pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for flat back. Exhale, down back through plank and lowering chaturanga. Inhale, up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward, back heel spins down as the arms sweep up. One movement. Down through lunge on an exhale, plank, same exhale, lowering, same exhale. Inhale, up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left side, on an inhale, left foot steps forward, back heel stays down. If you can keep that same inhale all the way up. Heading down through lunge, plank, and lowering on next hand. Inhale, up, and exhale, downward dog or child's pose. Do listen to your body and take that resting position that's best for you. Breathing deep. Let's go four. And five. Send the feet forward. Inhaling for flat back, and exhale, forward fold. Heels and toes together, bend the knees, sweep the arms, Utkatasana. And standing tall, Tadasana. Before our very last one, close the eyes, take a moment to channel that strength once again. Whatever you are thinking about before we begin, 
think about that strength of that person or thing. Really feeling it. Feel as if you are that strong right now. Holding on to that strength. Feel your energy rising as you do that. And here we go. Last one. Bending the knees, sweep the arms, Utkatasana, powerful pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for flat back. Exhale, down heading back to plank. Lowering chaturanga. Inhale, up. And exhale. Downward facing dog. Right side, right foot stepping forward, back heel spinning down. Sweep the arms up nice and fluid. Heading down through lunge. Also smooth transitions to plank and lowering chaturanga. Inhale, wide open shoulders. And exhale, downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward, back heel spins down, float the arms up. Heading down through lunge, plank, and lower. Inhale, up. And exhale, downward dog or child's pose. A few deep breaths. And send the feet forward, inhaling for flat back, exhale, forward fold. Heels and toes together, bend the knees, sweeping the arms, Utkatasana. Standing tall, mountain pose. From here, we'll prepare for Rikshasana tree pose. That's invigorating, hey? All those sun salutations. Feels good. So let's transition the weight onto the left foot. Be sure that supporting leg is parallel. So oftentimes it'll like to tip out, or in my case, like to tip in. And then we'll turn out the opposite leg, placing the foot either below the knee or, if you'd like to have a bit of a challenge, picking it up and placing it above the knee, just not right on the knee joint. From here, bring the hands together at heart center. Find a place to look at, maybe on the wall or something, so you don't dip over and fall like I just did. A focal point is a good help to find that balance. Eventually, you don't really need it. Your focus is completely within. You can even do this pose with your eyes closed. But when you're starting out, if your balance isn't your strong suit, Find a focal point, it's really helpful. But if you're like, no, I got this, this is easy. Raise the arms up, it's harder to balance if you're taller. So do give yourself a challenge. And if you're like, well, this is boring, Carla, then try closing the eyes. I'm just doing like weird jazz hands for some reason. But try closing the eyes, it's just good, clean fun. And see if you can actually visualize in your mind's eye, your surroundings. That is honestly the trick to balancing with your eyes closed. Close your eyes, but keep a mental note of everything that's around you. And picture it as your eyes are closed, as if your eyes were open. It's really kind of cool. And then when you need to open them, just open them for a second and then close them again. One more inhale to lengthen. On the exhale, returning to Tadasana, Mountain Pose. And maybe shaking or rolling up that supporting leg. It's a really good leg strengthener, too. But mostly it's for resilience, honestly, and humility. When you fall, just get right back in, okay? So we're on the other side. You know how I'm, like, really into it. I'm, like, hiking my pants up. So we change sides, transferring that weight onto the right foot. 
left knee tips out to the side, placing the foot either below the knee or above the knee. Finding your focal point spot to look at if that assists you. And then bring the hands together at heart center. From here, either holding on as best you can if this is a challenge for you. No, no sense moving on. If you're already feeling a really good challenge, then stay here, enjoy this. If you're looking for more challenge, raise those arms up. Moving slowly is one of the tricks. I just sort of shot my arms up like a rocket. Um, easier to balance if you're moving slowly because you can feel, it's actually kind of cool to try it too. You can feel your body compensating as the weight shifts, as your body moves. At this point, if you'd like to close the eyes, it's just good, clean fun. And when you fall out, I say when, not if, because I feel like you're not trying hard enough if you don't fall out a little bit. This pose, I love to do this pose for resilience more than actually finding balance because, I don't know, balancing in yoga pose is kind of boring. But if you can learn how to fall out and not care, not so much like apathetic, but like, know that failure is part of being human and just jump back in without wasting time. Like you fall out, no big deal, you get back in. But oftentimes in class, you can kind of feel it. Everyone who falls out of it, they're like, oh. right? Sometimes that sound effect is there, sometimes it's not. But truly, if you can fall out and get right back in without really, without it phasing you, Nonplussed, I think, is the word I'm looking for. Be nonplussed. And even trying to close the eyes. Some, sometimes you have to banana to try to hold on to it. Almost done. Last deep breath. Inhaling to lengthen. And exhale, return to Tadasana Mountain Pose. Maybe shaking or rolling up but supporting leg. Good. Isn't that a great exercise to learn resilience? I think it really is. So keep practicing that specific pose until you truly can get right back in without any extra thoughts of like, why can't I do this? Or yoga is stupid, anything like that. It literally does transition off the mat. And you'll notice out in the real world, when you falter, you'll just get right back to whatever it is you were doing. And it's really beneficial. From here, step the feet apart, fairly wide, heading into our warrior two. So nice wide stance, heel to arch alignment. So my right toes are tipping out and left toes are tipping in just slightly. And actually I'll mirror you so that all of our toes are facing that way, okay? So right leg, left leg tipping in just slightly, lifting up through the legs, arms in a T position, and then we bend through that front leg. Double checking that we're in good alignment especially the spine, and especially the knee, and especially the feet, okay, everything. So we want to start with the feet. If our feet are in a good position, odds are the rest of us will follow suit. So thinking about maybe Padabanda, like Mark Stevens talks about all the time, and that's simply, if you lift the toes up, a little bit press the heel into the floor, this isn't like the permanent pose, but when you do Padabanda, your knee kind of just sort of pops into the right place, and it's just an easy way to find good alignment. The other thing, too, is that when you do this, you feel your front glute engage. Bonus. Looking beyond the front fingertips. Feeling windswept and interesting. And from here, lengthening, release the arms. Flipping sides. So now for the left side, double check you've got that heel toe alignment, just sort of shuffle the feet as needed, arms up in a T, bending through that left knee, and same thing again, finding Padabanda, just until you can feel your knee right over top of the ankle, and then feel the glute engage, and try to release the toes, but keep everything else exactly the way it was. That usually takes some time for it to actually work out, but that's okay. Double check too, we talked about the foot and the knee in the first side, take a peek down. Are your shoulders right above the hips? Because there is that tendency to lean back or forward. We want to be completely square. And then straightening through that front leg, releasing the arms to come out. We'll flip de blip 
So the first side again, preparing for would you depart for Konasana. So extended side angle, same stance with that heel to arch alignment. And then we start in Warrior 2 once again, Virabhadrasana 2. From here, we've got our three options. So the first option, and the easiest to do, which I recommend starting in, is place the forearm onto the thigh. Top arm is alongside the top here. If this isn't working out for your shoulder, though, you can bend the arm even. But trying to keep it as open as possible, or if it has to be lower, that's okay too, or if it's just not working, arm behind you. The next variation is to have the hand onto your block or the floor. Eventually, it's on the outside of your front leg. And then same thing with the top arm. Super fun variation is the bind, where we bring that left arm behind you, and then, or sorry, the right arm behind you, and then the top arm also behind you, trying to find those fingers behind you, opening up the heart to the sky, getting a really awesome stretch through the hip. And to come out, belly scoops in, we come all the way up, and flip over to the second side. Heading into our left side, Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. And preparing for the same variation as we did the first side. So whatever variation that was, heading into that again. Opening up through the heart, breathing deep. Slowly release and come on all the way up. From here, flipping back to the first side, but shortening up the stance a little bit for Uchita Trikanasana. So, like yay distance apart. Not that super whoop, wide stance. But we still have the heel to toe, or, or heel to arch. What's that thing called again? Yoga makes you zen haven't noticed. Arms up in a T position. This is one of my favorite poses of all time. From here, we reach, reach, reach to the right, like you're reaching along a shelf and actually trying to, trying to touch the wall. So really reaching and then place the bottom arm right onto the shin. So do have a little bit of weight into that bottom leg. Belly scoops in, top arm reaching high to the sky. If it's okay on your neck, looking right up to the thumb. If your neck is like, mm -mm, you can look down or neutral. Either way, breathing deep. One little alignment check here is to take a peek down at your leg. If your nose isn't right above it, it means you're too far forward. So draw the body back in line and opening up. Pretend there's a wall behind you too. In case that shoulder tips forward, you want to pull that top shoulder to touch the back wall, that invisible wall that's right behind you. And to come out, belly scoops in, and come on all the way up as we flip to the other side. Left toes towards the top of your mat, and right toes tip in just slightly, arms in a T, and then we reach, 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 and then placing a little bit of weight into that bottom arm. Top arm reaching high to the sky, maybe looking up at it if that's okay on the neck, maybe not. Eventually, that bottom hand is on the outside of your leg or foot, onto a block or onto a floor. But in the meantime, just keep it right on top of the leg. And breathing deep. And belly scoops in, come on all the way up, and release. From here, we'll prepare for Garudasana Eagle Pose. So let's transfer the weight onto the left foot. We want the left leg completely straight, 
I'm a bit askew because the camera's not facing directly whatever, but if you're at the top of your mat, this is your square. Right leg over top of the left, and then if available, sneaking those toes all the way around the opposite calf. Belly scooping in, long through the waist, thinking about or internally rather. The top leg is internally rotating, bottom leg is parallel, top leg internally rotating. Arms in front, we wrap up the arms now in our eagle pose for the arms. So right arm underneath, back so the hands face each other. If available, that right hand moves towards you and finds the palm. Breathing deep. It should feel like a nice stretch on the shoulders, wherever you're at, even if you don't have the full clasp of the arms. And then release, unravel, unwind. And ready to ravel and wind on the other side. So transferring the weight onto the right foot, left leg crosses all the way over, if available, wrapping those toes as well. And then we'll add the arms. This time, left arm beneath back so the hands face each other, maybe you sort of stay there, or maybe that left hand moves towards your chin, and then we find the hands, the palms together, breathing deep, trying to fight for that balance. Same thing with tree pose though, if you fall, I'll just get right back in. Try not to feel frustrated, it's just a yoga pose. We put so much emphasis on, I have to get it right. Like, no, no we don't. Not today. We'll work on it and work on it. If it doesn't happen today, that is okay. Slowly unraveling and unwinding back to Tadasana Mountain Pose. Preparing for our peak posture today, which is kind of fun. I'm going to turn this way. It's important that I talk to myself sometimes. So for this one, actually I'll face you to show you, but we'll transfer the weight onto the left foot and then cross the right ankle over top of the foot, or over top of the knee. For this one, just a little bit of safety information first. So this might be all well and good, but do, this might sound like common sense, you be like, whatever, Carla, I don't need to know that. But I assure you, it's good to practice. If you fall, release the leg. I like to do that. I've been doing this pose for 20 years and I still do it. Just practice, just release. If I fall, just release, release the foot. Because what can happen is we fall, and our hands reach the floor, and if we don't have that external rotation, our knees aren't going to like that pose very, very much. So from here, ready? We'll do right ankle crosses over left knee, and then bring the hands to heart center. So this is balance and strength of the supporting leg and stretch all at the same time. So we're feeling the right hip. This is a an external rotator for that top leg. See how I fell, but I released the foot. So release the foot, really important. If you have extra flexibility, you can go a bit further and eventually reach the hands towards the floor. Breathing deep. Eventually, eventually, the toes wrap around the arm. We place the hands flat on the floor. Feeling that nice stretch, holding here. If you know Galavasana and you'd like to go into that, and if that's part of your practice, I won't teach it today, you can go ahead. Breathing deep. To come out, we reverse core slowly, 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 strengthen that supporting leg all the way up. Now release. Ready for the second side. And even though we've just did it on the first side, I still like to do that little safety fit on the second side. So left ankle crosses over right knee just a couple just just because it's just it's like a habit for me now i just always write but right. just so it for sure is like a motor skill like you will definitely do that if you fall here we go and nice and slow just heading into your edge wherever that is wherever you get stuck just hold breathing deep Slowly start to come all the way up 
and releasing back to Tadasana Mountain Pose. So it's a bit of a Galavasana prep as well as an Eagle prep pose. Sometimes Mark Steenums and I have a little bit of different, uh, just different names for poses. Like for instance, in classical sun salutations, I say baby cobra and he'll say Shalabhasana. They're very, very similar. But uh, Mark Stevens calls this one Eagle Prep Pose. So, moving on to Parajvotanasana. Let's step the left foot back. So this one's a baby step, though. When we had a nice wide stance in our warrior pose, this one's much, much shorter, even shorter than Trikonasana, triangle pose. What I like to do in this one, too, is get a nice wide stance. So eventually, this is a heel-to-heel -heel alignment, but that's a very narrow stance, and it requires a lot of mobility in the hips. So until that point, I'm actually quite flexible, and I still widen it a bit, just, just for extra space and to be sure that alignment is spot on because it truly is more about the alignment than it is about looking like you're in it further, right? So it's just step that front foot out towards the pinky toe a little bit once you're there. So we've got the left foot back, right foot forward, and I've got my feet practically mat width, and I'm a B mat, it's like an extra wide mat, and move. Arms behind you, so this one is like an anti-slouching pose. We bring our arms behind you, either just clasping onto the arms, or maybe the elbows, or if available, reverse namaskar. And that might take a little bit of wriggling into, and that's totally fine. And this is why I love yoga more than ballet, because you can scrunch your face up as you get into poses, and then smile. Then, as we're here, so this is, remember, to get you to not slouch. So what happens is, even when our arms are behind us, the shoulders try to compensate. They try to go, no, but I really want to be forward. So the shoulders go forward. Maybe yours don't talk out loud like mine do, but what we want to do is draw the shoulders back and the shoulder blades towards each other. Then draw the right hip back. Inhale, lifting through the heart. On your exhale, forward fold. Your spine is just as straight and square as you were in the sun salutations. Continuously drawing the right hip back, right hip back, right hip back, right hip back, shoulders back, shoulders back, shoulders back, until you find your edge. And then just hold, lengthening through the spine. Double check that both ribs are facing. The right side of your ribs and the left side of your ribs are equal distance towards the floor. The shoulder blades behind you are equal distance to the floor. There's a tendency to skew the torso in this posture. Don't let it. Come on all the way up. You can keep your arms here if it's just easier between sides or release. I like to return to mountain and keep my arms there because it's a bit of an ordeal to get them up there in the first place. So stepping the right foot back and I like to have a nice wide stance to be sure I'm in better alignment but I would be in a heel to heel. Belly scoops in, lengthening. I'm drawing my left hip back so that it's square with the other one. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, long straight spine. So continually drawing that left hip back, left hip back, left hip back. Shoulders back, 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 back. Lengthening through the spine until you find your edge. And then hold, hold, hold. Breathing deep. On an inhale, belly scoops in. Come on all the way up. And release the arms nice and slow. And return to Tadasana Mountain Pose. We're ready to flow a little bit. So come on up to the top of your mat in your mountain pose, heels and toes together. We'll head to one sun A. So inhale, arms go up. Oh, that feels much looser after that pose. On the exhale, gliding forward, nice and smooth, all the way down. Inhale, looking up to the horizon for flat back. Exhale, down, heading back to plank and lowering chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. 
holding your outer mukha Kvasanasana, holding, holding, holding. Breathing deep, so we're building a bit of strength here in the shoulders. Keep the shoulders away from the ears, even though we're upside down. At the same time, allow the heels to lower down towards the floor, so long as they're right behind the toes. And see if you can feel your belly kind of scooping in. Just let gravity scoop the belly in. You don't even have to suck it in. You just let gravity go whoop, and your belly just kind of lifts in and up. If at any time you need a little rest, find a child's pose. Otherwise, hold, hold, hold. Breathing deep. Almost done. Shoulders away from the ears. Allowing the belly to scoop in. Heels lowering down towards the earth. And then gently lowering through hands and knees and all the way to a seated position with the feet forward in Tandasana Staff Pose. So lifting up tall, heels of my hands reaching towards the floor, maybe even pointing the toes. I'm just getting that extra strength happening. Shoulders down, shoulders down. And we'll prepare for Bharata Vajrasana. So from here, Swinging both legs over to the left, bringing your right toes just underneath the ankle. And the knees are slightly apart, facing forward. Lifting up nice and tall, we'll twist to the left. So the right hand moves across the left knee, and the other hand behind you. Eventually, it clasps onto the, <laughs> I'm like helping my hand make it go but you know, gentle. Lifting up nice and tall and twisting to the left. But we look to the right, shoulders down, lifting up through the heart. Chin level with the earth. And slowly unravel and unwind and return to Dandasana Staff Pose. Other side, feet go over to the right with the bottom foot beneath the ankle. Knees are tipped out a little bit apart, lifting up nice and tall, this time twisting to the right. So my left hand is onto the right knee, other arm behind. Lifting up nice and tall, I'm twisting to the right, but then I'm looking to the left. Lifting up tall, there's a tendency to kind of let the chin go up, try to keep the chin level with the earth. Breathing deep. Unraveling and winding, returning to Dandasana staff pose, and preparing for Paschimottanasana. It's our forward fold, our seated forward fold, remembering, and Mark Stevens talks about this a lot, do not pull the flesh away from you before you forward fold. We'd rather keep the tenons healthy rather than skew them and then strain them. So. If anything, just like lift up and go right back on the squish, which sounds crass, but it's, you know what I'm talking about when I say that, go on the squish, and then belly scoops in, on an exhale forward fold, reaching for those toes. Breathing deep. So if we had drawn the flesh away from us, as we forward fold, you would feel this mostly on the innermost, tendon, hamstrings tendon. It would be pulling too much on the innermost tendon and not equally along all of the hamstrings tendons. This is why so many, so many yogis have 
there's an actual thing called yoga butt. And I believe this exact motion is responsible for most of that. There's a lot of forward folding in yoga, it's true, but having incorrect alignment is the number one cause of yoga injuries. And come on out. We are almost on our sequence today. We only have the funnest poses left. So heading into Halasana Plow Pose, as always, if you are not comfortable with this posture, simply do legs up the wall pose. It has so many benefits as well. And if you're into it, then we lay all the way back. I like to have extra cushioning. So I'm gonna take a moment to find my extra cushioning here. And remember too, you can have a blanket beneath just your shoulders and not your head. And that will help make the pose a little bit more accessible. I like to have this beneath my entire spine. So I, I don't wanna necessarily make the pose easier, but I want to have my spine on something cushy. So I have my head on the blanket as well. So this, those are the two of the different ways that you can use the blanket. Remember, don't use momentum because even though this is a good, safe posture, we have to be in correct alignment, just like any other posture. So once you lay down, head goes straight, looking straight to the ceiling, it does not move. Do not use momentum, but rather a little rock. And if you miss it, just let it go. Little rock, catch the hips. If you catch them, great, carry on. Then lowering the feet down to a chair or a block or maybe the floor behind you and just holding here. Remember to keep the neck neutral so you're not moving. And the weight is into the shoulders, not so much on the neck. Almost done. If you need to come out early, no problem. And slowly release. Use your arms as landing gear. And one vertebra at a time. Belly scoops in to control the landing. Once you arrive, keep the back neutral for a few moments. Sometimes the back feels weird after that one. It should feel good, but a little weird because we don't often stretch that other than in yoga class. So just think of all of the extra blood flow that's happening in these spaces that we don't usually stretch right now. A lot of extra healing, a lot of extra circulation, so many good things, oxygen reaching new and different places. Preparing now for fish pose or Uttana Padasana prep. Ugh, I'm just gonna toss it aside. So for this one, laying all the way back. And same thing again, if you do not feel comfortable with this one, just do legs up the wall again. Otherwise, laying back, feet together, arms along your sides, palms facing down. We press into the elbows and lift the heart up high to the sky. Then gently lower the crown of the head down to the floor. Lifting the heart up. See if you can lift it a little bit higher. And release. And you're in the perfect position to enter Shavasana right from here. If your back needs a little extra support today after your practice, feel free to keep the knees bent with the feet on the floor. Otherwise, extend the legs, arms along your sides, palms facing up, and close the eyes. 
softening everything, everything. But especially through the neck and the shoulders and all the way down the arms. Letting the fingers softly curl. Softening through the face. Softening around the eyes. And even the muscle between the eyes. Letting it all go. Starting to come back, wiggle the fingers, the toes, and gently roll your head from side to side. And reaching your arms above head on the floor for a big stretch, feeling totally refreshed. And bending your knees in one at a time. And gently roll over to the right side. And just pause there for a moment as you come back. And slowly start to press yourself all the way up to a comfortable seated position. And when you arrive, palms facing up on the knees. Inhale, sitting up tall. And exhale, softly close the eyes. Taking those final moments to thank yourself for showing up to your practice today. And an extra little thank you to someone who's maybe helped you in life recently. Just sending them out a little thought. And slowly open the eyes. Namaste, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. And an extra little thank you to Mark Stevens. A very humble and sincere thank you for the sequence provided today. That's sequence number eight, hip opening. I'll see you next time.